we're going to talk about transforming and healing mental trauma. Mental trauma is a little bit different than uh, regular trauma, and it's because we actually uh, are hurt mentally in our mental body. And so it's a very different thing than emotional. However, you can use some of the same techniques to heal mental trauma. Now, healing mental trauma has three main goals. To improve or get rid of your symptoms. Teach skills to heal it. In other words, I'm going to teach you skills to heal uh, the mental traumas and restore self-esteem. Believe it or not, our self-esteem is in our mind. And when we get mental trauma, it actually lowers our self-esteem and makes us not love ourselves as much. Now, to improve the symptoms, we have to get rid of anxiety and fear patterns. Now, Doctors, if you go to psychiatrists or psychologists, they'll use cognitive behavior therapy, which is talking about all of these traumas. And the problem with talking about them all the time is it brings them back up into your awareness and actually causes more disturbing patterns in your life. And so we have to find the source of the fear and anxiety and transform the timeline and memory by doing other techniques. Now, I'm not saying, you know, all the psychologists and psychiatrists are wrong, but I found years of therapy, people still hold their trauma and they don't improve because they keep bringing up the trauma instead of uncreating it and getting rid of it. So, we start experiencing in order to understand mental trauma, we create mental trauma through events that make us not feel good, actually not think good about ourselves. And so we're creating a separate mental body. And when we were created, we were just one light body. But as we experience different things, we created a separate mental body, a se and our light body separated from our once united energy from the Creator's per pure love energy. Our parents teach us from fear, and they do it because they were taught in fear, and their parents were taught in fear. And so we have to shift our consciousness. Now, our parents' teachings of fear moved us further and further from the love of God and further and further from the love of self, causing separation from joy, peace, and love. And we move back into self-esteem, excuse me, we move into lack of self-esteem, lack of self-love, causing anxiety, separation, and fear. So, as we create new thoughts through observation of the fears, anxiety, the separation, and pain from our parents, teachers, caregivers, and our leaders, believe it or not, right now our leaders are putting us in a lot of uh, mental trauma. And our thoughts lead to our emotions, our emotions lead to actions, these all lead to our personality, and our personal reality is created, creating a world reality. And you can imagine what's happened during this time. Now, transforming us into even lower vibrations caused by our mental body by entreating or entraining in the flesh, creating the fear, trust issues, anxiety, not thinking we're safe in the world and that the world is a scary and dangerous place with mean people, people that are trying to kill us if they don't wear their mask, you know. I mean, it's very interesting what we've seen this last year. Now, we spend our life creating other gods to do our will, creating other creations outside the love of God and we subjugate them to our thoughts, wills, 
our will, and our desires, our thoughts start subjugating us to the collective fear, desires, and anxiety, followed by our own enslavement, separating us further from the love of God. So first, they separate us through uh, social distancing, through masks, you know, there's a lot of ways that we as humans get separated. And also, if you're not wearing your mask or you're not social distancing, their, their fear gets all of them and they start condemning everyone around them, especially those who aren't adhering to what the norm has become. And so it separates us further, not only from God, but from each other. So now is the time to heal. Now is the present moment. The present moment has also got the past and the future in this present moment. And so now is the time to change our mental separation and even our physical separation. Mental thought creates intent. The thought creates energy the action is followed by a cause and an effect, and we create a construct which leads to creating our personality, which creates our personal reality, the collective reality, our world reality, and universal affecting reality. So, right now, we need to shift what? Our intent and our thoughts, because that's where everything begins. Are our thoughts even real or even true? You know, when, when this situation in the world happened a, a year ago, you know, I knew the definition. I, I was a trained medical doctor, and I knew the definition of a pandemic. And when this thing showed up, it didn't even fit the definition. So guess what happened? World Health Organization and the CDC changed the definition to include a lesser amount of people dying because when they declared it, there was not a pandemic, but they changed the definition and it became uh, a pandemic. <laughs> So we can change definitions. They're changing definitions of words and situations right now. And as you can see, you know, instead of uh, calling people one thing or another, they're changing it to they or it or them or whatever. And it's interesting because we're changing definitions to fit the scenario that the leaders want us to follow. So, are our thoughts real or even true? Where is the source of our mental trauma? Because that's actually what we need to find in order to resolve the mental trauma. A lot of people don't even know what caused their mental trauma. Now, when I started working on my mental trauma, I went into thought and prayer and meditation, and I was led to the source of my trauma, and then I asked, okay, what's the best way to heal this trauma? And I found that I was led to the people and doing the things that relieved my mental trauma. Now, why do we think the way we think? Why do I think the way I think? We've got to ask ourselves these questions because we've got to go back to even the first question, are my thoughts real or even true? And so we need to think about why we're thinking the way we think because if we don't, we won't know where that mental trauma is coming from. The next question is, how do I let go of fear and anxiety and mistrust? Now, this is a big question because a lot of people have no clue how they're going to do it or what even causes their fear, anxiety, or mistrust. And so these are the things, the questions actually, that we should ponder and pray about and meditate about. 
because when we ponder and pray, we look at it and we ask God to assist us through prayer to find the origin, the original mental trauma. And so how, what can I do today to release that mental trauma? And so when we find the source, we ask God, what can I do to release this mental trauma? Now, in my first book, Take Back Your Health, the kahunas had me write many different emotional healing techniques. And in these techniques, you know, it's interesting, it's called an oracle book because people would hold it in their hands, ask what they should do to heal themselves that day, and they'd open it up and it would go to these techniques of healing emotional trauma, mental trauma, different types of techniques to heal these things. And it was exactly what they needed that day. Sometimes it was just calling up the person and ho'oponopono on them over the phone. Tell, tell them, look, you are my best friend and I love being your friend. And I'm sorry we had this disagreement. And I'm sorry it traumatized you, but it also traumatized me. And please forgive me for my part in it. I forgive you and I forgive myself and I'm so grateful for you and I want to mend this relationship so we can get rid of this mental trauma. And so, you know, there's a lot of things we can do and Ho'oponopono is really good for emotional trauma and you can also use it for mental trauma. But there's other techniques that are very effective also. Now, when you think about transforming and healing your mental trauma, we want to improve our symptoms of anxiety, fear, mistrust, everything. And we need to teach skills to deal with mental trauma. And that's what we're doing today. And we want to restore your self-love and self-esteem. Now it's interesting, there are supplements that can assist you with this, believe it or not. Even the medical system has acknowledged that fish oil is something that helps with mental trauma. Mental trauma actually causes metabolic disorders in the brain because of the energy, the negative energy creates all kinds of difficulties with absorption of nutrients, of, of using the nutrients once it gets in the cells. And, it, you know, trauma can even stop nutrients from getting into the brain cells. And so we, fish oil actually opens up the cell membranes in the brain and helps the cells work better. And Nisetol has been found to be very effective in helping trauma because it calms down the brain, calms down the nervous system. I use a combination of magnesium with inositol and you take it at night and it helps your sleep better. It also helps the brain clear out clutter easier. And inositol is very relaxing to the nervous system. When we're in fear, constant fear and anxiety, our body never gets out of the fight or flight, the sympathetic nervous system. When we're in the sympathetic nervous system, we can't create new thoughts. We can't create new ideas. We're scared and we're ready to run, fight or hide. And sometimes fear freezes us so we don't even move. We can't move forward or backward because we're stuck. And so inositol and fish oil are very helpful, helpful for this. Now, N-acetylcysteine helps us in transforming mental trauma and improving symptoms. Somehow that ended up in there, but there's evidence N-acetylcysteine is a very good nutrient. Alpha-lipoic acid and B vitamins are very, good and extra B12. Believe it or not, when you're under stress, anxiety, fear, not sleeping good, we burn out all of our B vitamins and they disappear, especially B12. 
And so taking extra B vitamins and extra B12 is very good. And alpha lipoic acid. Now there's also something called DMAE that is also very effective. Now systemic formulas came out with a product called Neurosyn. And Neurosyn has all of these except the fish oil in it and is very effective for helping the brain. Kids who have ADHD, they should be on this. Kids that have ADD should be on this. And uh, all of us who are in fear, anxiety, and in constant stress mode, we should be on it. And believe it or not, it's really good for diabetics because it helps the nervous system not develop diabetic neuropathy. Isn't that cool? So supplements are very good. Now they don't totally get rid of the anxiety and fear, but they do help us cope with it. Now, the other thing, now this is a very big slide and it's got a lot of information, so I'm gonna go very slow with this. Clearing the negative thoughts, actions, and energy helps clear the mental charges out of our mind. And this is achieved by changing the way we think about things. Because when you change the way you think about things, the things you think about changes. Now, you know, Wayne Dyer always said, when you change the way you look at things, the way you look at things changes. And so I'm kind of still a little bit from him here, but it's true. We have to change how we mentally remember things that have traumatized, traumatized us and remove them from our mental body. And if it's an emotional trauma, we need to move, remove it from our emotional body. Now to clear yourself or the person affecting you, you know what you have to do? You change the thoughts you have about that person or that event and you make a different scenario. So this is why it's important to pray ponder, meditate, find the source. Now, it was interesting, when I was just a little kid, I had an older brother that was six years older than me. And believe it or not, he was constantly blaming me for the things that he did wrong. And so I got in trouble. And he was very effective at doing this, and so, I got a lot of mental trauma from my brother. And one, <laughs> you know, I, I told one on the goldfish today, or report today, where he had my, my real dad, who we'd go visit every other weekend, he had a pool table, but he made you have to put a quarter in in order to play it. And that way he made money off the neighborhood kids and stuff. He was always devising ways to make money. But my brother figured out if he picked up that pool table, and he was a lot bigger than I was, he was six years older than me, he'd pick up the pool table and, excuse me, the pinball table, and drop it. And it would move the mechanism that the quarter would move as it would go down in and it would give him a game. And he kept doing this. One time he lifted it too high and dropped it, and the, the glass on top totally busted. And it was really interesting. I was in the backyard playing with another little kid my age, and my uh, brother blamed me. Scott just broke the the pin pool uh, the pinball machine, and my uh, stepmother came out and looked at it, and she said Scott did this. And she yelled at me and made me come over and she looked at me and said, did you do this? And I said, no, I didn't do that. I was out playing with my friend. My brother goes, no, he jumped on it and broke it and then he ran out to play with his friend. And so anyway, it was really interesting because she got out of belt and started whipping me with this thing. And she had me stand with my hands against the outer wall and just whipped me until I was bleeding. 
And you know, it, it really traumatized me mentally. And it made me not trust my brother at all. And so I would stay totally away from him from then on. And it really caused some problems. But if you think about this, you know, I had to go back and recreate the scenario. And so what I did was I went back in time to when my brother was lifting up the pool table and I got really strong that to, in order to change the scenario, I had to change what happened. And so instead of the pool table breaking, it pulled the plug out. And, it, and so he didn't realize it pulled the plug out, so he thought he broke it, but he couldn't see what had happened to it because the, the plug was hidden behind a block that my dad had put up there so people wouldn't be able to steal it and he had uh, hooked the block on with some strapping and uh, it was quite interesting, quite ingenious what he had done. But anyway, when I changed that and then brought that forward into the now that he had not broken the pinball machine and he had not blamed anything on me and I was fine out playing, I moved that into the present time and it changed the timeline. And all of a sudden, I just felt this lift off of me. Now, I did this about uh, six years ago after my brother had died and it made me feel better about my brother. And I felt love for my brother. And I let go of all of the mistrust and the anxiety and fear that he created within me for years living with him. And it was a marvelous thing to do, recreating the event into a more positive scenario, bringing the energy into the now, the present moment, releasing that negative interaction and creating a new timeline using that positive scenario. Now, I've done that with thousands of things and people, and I've helped people change their timelines with their past and with their traumas, and they feel a shift in their bodies. They feel a shift in their minds, and they change the way their feeling and thinking about things, and then the things they think about and feel changes. So just know it's a very powerful method. Now, going into a meditative state, bringing God's love into your heart, your voice, your vision, your mind, your higher self, and your emotions helps you to find yourself helps you to connect to the love of God so that you can love yourself more and love your neighbor more. And who is our neighbor? Everybody in the whole world. We can contact anybody in the world right now on a telephone, video call, Zoom call, you name it. So everybody is our brother and sister now. And so we need to make right with everybody. Now, improving your skills to deal with mental trauma in the process of clearing our own energy and others' energy, it helps those who affect you and clears their energy also. Now, this is a concept that was developed with Ho'oponopono. As Hugh Lin cleared those criminals, you know, psychopathic criminals, of their stuff, and he didn't even go and talk to him. He just uh, said, I love you. I'm sorry you committed this murder, and I'm sorry for my feelings about you committing this murder, and please forgive me for my feelings, and I forgive you for what you did, and I forgive myself for what I'm thinking, and I'm grateful for you because I love you, and you start over again and keep going until you feel that has cleared. And he did this with each uh, one of these inmates 
And literally, not only did he clear his thoughts, but he cleared their thoughts and feelings, and they became better human beings, and they were leased out into the normal thing. And I know I'm gonna t you're going to he hear some stories over and over again, but it drives home a point that whenever we're clearing other people's energy through God's love, and we need to bring God's love into us because we can't love our neighbor until we love ourselves, and we can't love ourselves until we bring the love of God into us, into our mind, our hearts, our mind, and our soul. And when we bring our love, God's love, into our heart, our mind, and our soul, then we can love others. And when we love others, we can shift their energy. But we have to get into God's love before we can shift energy. And through telepathy of the mind and the heart combination with our soul's intent, we can change deeply, deeply possessed individuals. We can clear out the entities by speaking to them with love and sending them to heaven and cleanse and allow the angels to clear the energy. And without interference of other beings and entities, we can help our fellow men to evolve. Now, you, it was really interesting when I really read about the life of Jesus and how he healed people. It was really fascinating. In the, in the New Testament, it talks about how Jesus would do a clearing and depossession on all the people before he could even heal them because he had to get rid of those negative thought forms and negative entities and demons out of people's bodies before they could heal their bodies. And so he would first clear their energy and then he would visualize them being perfect. Now visualization, again, you think about it, did Jesus use the technique of going back to when the disease started and bring them that perfection back in that and bring a new timeline to them? I think yes. But he also used his godly powers to do it. And so it occurred very quickly. You know, as I've dealt with healing people over the years, I found sometimes it can be instantaneous and sometimes it takes time and it takes faith and it takes persistence. And so, you know, even, even me asking all the prayers I do, sometimes I don't get answers right away. It takes time and persistence and continually focusing attention and emotion and actions to create what we truly want to create. And so just know that we can create what we desire not only within ourselves, but within others. And as we heal our, ourselves, we actually heal the whole. We are one. What does that actually mean? All of us were humans were created in the eternal plan of things in the beginning. We were all created in the beginning and as spirit energy. And then, as we separated us from God, we became lower vibrations. We pulled ourselves away from God. And then we created more things, pulling us even further from God. And ended up on prison planet, planet Earth. And we had to live many lives, most of us here. And creating scenarios, different things, sinning, doing things that weren't good in the eyes of God. And yet we were the ones that separated ourselves. We were the ones that created these things. And so now it's time to become one again. For as we evolve 
into the higher dimension, we need to bring as many of us as we can with us. Now, there are going to be those who will refuse. And St. Germain has told me that they will be reabsorbed back into the great central sun. And those of us who decide to ascend and go through the process of repentance and healing and helping each other and creating more love and less trauma, <laughs> we are going to evolve into better human beings. So, improving skills to deal with the mental trauma, I love you. Focus unconditional love towards yourself and others. I love what, and change what happened. I change what happened, whatever was done to you or them, and ask God's love to change the scenario. Know that God is love and you are the gods. You are the creation of God. And then visualize a better interaction which changes the negative scenario and bring that new interaction, that new timeline where there wasn't a bad thing that happened or a trauma that happened, something that is loving and kind together and bring that forward in a new interaction into the now, the present moment, shifting into a higher vibration, all the people involved, creating a new timeline. We as humans have the power to create different timelines. Just through our thoughts, we can create different things, but we can also create different scenarios. You know, when I met the uh, super space, the, the super soldiers who are in the uh, secret space programs, they heard my talk on love and they loved it. And they said, they came up to me and they said, Scott, did you know we were losing the war in outer space? We couldn't move fast enough. Their uh, instrumentation was faster than ours. Their weapons were better than ours. And we were losing the war. And then our commander said, let's pray. And they prayed. They started praying together and bringing in the help of God, asking for the help of God. And guess what happened? They started being able to anticipate faster than their craft could initiate the problems. They started being able to know where they were going to be, and they started winning the war, basically. And they were so pleased, and they said, yes, we've got to bring God back into our country because God leads us to do better things and be better people and create better things. And so, as you can see, there's a part of our government right now trying to remove God. We already removed it out of the schools, removed prayer out of the schools, they're removing in God we trust out of the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. And, you know, they're trying to get rid of God. They're, and they're saying they're doing it because of separation of church and state. But truthfully, our founding fathers didn't want to take God out of the, uh, out of the government. In fact, they had, you know, you swear on the Bible that you would keep your solemn oath of office. And, you know, as you saw, they don't even want to do that anymore because they want nothing to do with God and they want nothing to do with the energy of making ourselves better. In fact, they want to enslave us. And uh, so, you know, it's just something to think about. So this is very powerful. Now, write and burn is one of my favorite things to do too, because if you think about it, when you write on paper, it's wood. And believe it or not, wood energy carries energy into the earth and it carries it up into the etheric energy. And it's very powerful. And when you write down a negative event in your life and describe what happened to hurt you or even another person, 
you write it down what you wish you would have said and done. So you write down what you did wrong, then you write down what you wish you would have said and done, and then you let God's loving thoughts become your loving thoughts and God's loving feelings become your loving feelings. You feel God's spirit and walk with God's energy. Then you take that paper and you take it outside. Don't burn them up in your house because you want your alarms going off and trigger and anything. But take it outside, burn it outside and let it go into the ethers of the planet, the atmosphere, the ethers, the energies. And believe it or not, if you burn that with the intent to have the heavens shift the scenario to a more positive outcome, letting God shift that timeline, that's another technique. And you, you actually incorporate God making that happen. Now, one of the things I found is whenever we're transforming and healing mental trauma, it's really good to retreat into times of contemplation, journaling, meditation, continually reestablishing our clarity of our priorities and recording our experiences, difficulties, successes, and accomplishments along the way. It's important to journal because when you're writing things down, you can go back and review where you were and find that you've actually made huge improvements in your life. And it's important to maintain a clear perspective of the progress you're making. A lot of times when we feel like we're not making progress, we feel like, what's the use? But when you go back and you see where you came from, you see how far you've come and the progress you've achieved, you know, it helps change your self-esteem. It gives you more faith. Each day, place great faith in these rules, in this truth. This simple process that brings about profound changes and miracles in your life and into the life of those that you've been dealing with. It's amazing how we can change the way we think about things, the things we think about changes. Okay, so summary. When should you start doing this? Today, right now. When you get off this, this call, I would start doing it. Apply the teachings and techniques, because if you don't apply it, by the end of the week, you won't even remember what, what we talked about. You know, it's been found that if we don't apply things, we can't be clear and we, we don't make progress. But when we start applying it, it helps us. So in order to clear a negative thought each day, as often as needed, we have to have the intent to heal not only our life and thoughts, but others' life and thoughts. And we become more positive thoughts and we create a more positive life with love. Take back your energy, forgive yourself and others. Now, the reason I say take back your energy, when you are mad at somebody or still traumatized by somebody, you're still giving them energy, albeit negative energy, it is energy. And so we need to start communicating loving thoughts and becoming better Telepathic communication is very powerful. We need to use it. Now, the spring mentoring is still open. You can still get the past things, tell your friends and family and neighbors. You know, we're teaching very important techniques and methods of shifting our consciousness and the consciousness of the planet. planet. So the world needs us to wake up and cause a shift in consciousness for the ascension. So we still have, we still can take more people and we'll make room for them. Now, transferring and healing the mental trauma, our mental body is mainly created by our thoughts and the thoughts of others about us and our physical world. For my world to improve, my thoughts need to improve. Thoughts 
create actions, create energy. And those three things create our personality. And our personality creates our personal reality and our collective reality. So it starts with our thoughts to change and become better. Okay, so the assignment for this week, I want you to continue doing last week's assignment of doing Ho'oponopono every day, twice a day. But this assignment is you need to write down an event with mental trauma, forgive it with burning it, or use the timeline shifting technique. Uh, you know, changing the event and imagine a new, more positive event, bringing the new event into the present moment. Now, this is simple. You know, keep Ho'oponopono. I want you to do the Ho'oponopono for at least six weeks. This type of uh, assignment, you can do it. And if you feel that shift of energy, you know you did it right. If you don't feel that shift of energy, keep doing this until you get it right. And usually, you can get it right fairly quickly. It'll only take one or two times, maybe three, but, you know, this is very effective. Next week, we're going to be talking about transforming and healing DNA damage, protecting and perfecting our cells. And so, right now, we're going to do uh, questions. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, with friends and neighbors and family who are suffering from mental and emotional trauma and coming to very different opinions about current events, it is difficult to have conversations. You know, I found that's true. I can't even talk to my firstborn son without him getting combative and, and defending his position. And so what I've done is I always end our conversation with, I love you, and I don't want you to feel any bad things about me. Please forgive me for the way I feel. I hope on upon him. And then guess what I do? I come home or get off the phone, and I start doing the whole upon upon him until I feel the energy shift. And usually he'll text me and say, Dad, I'm sorry, I, you know, I'm sorry defending this so much and you know he'll say different things that I know he feels the Ho'oponopono and that way I know I'm okay but uh, Saint Germain has told me to tell you don't say anything don't fight with people don't defend your your thoughts and your feelings about what's going on what we need to do is just say to everybody we see telepathically, we, we say it in our mind, I love you and I would love for you to wake up to the truth. And that's all you do. You don't get in an argument. You just smile. Well, I can't see your smile if you're wearing a mask, but, but just, you know, smile through your eyes and be kind and loving. Because right now, it's very important that we teach with telepathy. That way, it goes into their mind, and they think the thoughts are coming from themselves. And then they don't get angry with you. Because when we make them angry, we cause trauma. And we don't want to cause more mental trauma than we're already under. I tell you, the, the fear, the, the anxiety, is so high that people are in fight or flight. And so they do, they fight with us, with the everything. And so we've got to get out of that. And I hope that answers your question. How do we break free from trauma if the programming is from an entity that issued a curse or spell? Well, guess what I learned how to do? Uh, the fairies came to me and had me clear uh, learn how to dispel spells and curses and different things. All of us can do this. And what's interesting, you can meditate, ponder, and pray. I, I spent weeks pondering and praying about these different spells and things, and I knew the guy that was I was supposed to heal that was coming in, the fairies told me about him, they told me about the trauma he'd been through, 
And uh, I knew the spells that they had cast on this guy. They were trying to kill him. They were trying to suffocate him. And they had caused three different spells on him. One was literally winding him in this dark, suffocating energy. And, you know, it was interesting, the spells they had cast on him. And uh, as I removed the spells, I had to remove the outermost spell and moved into that last one, which was suffocating him. And he wanted to commit suicide because he couldn't breathe. He couldn't, he felt like he couldn't even think. And so you need to access somebody who can help remove these things. The fairies had me buy three books on incantations, spells, curses, and I read all three and I prepared myself and with the power of God, all things are possible. And I prayed to God to assist me to dispel these things and I was able to do it. So get with somebody who knows what they're doing and free them from these curses, these spells, with somebody who knows what they're doing. And you have to trust them because <laughs> spells and curses are very, very difficult. Now, entities and, and getting rid of negative spirits and demons, that takes uh, knowledge on how to deal with them now, most entities are just deceased humans who are stuck here on earth and they're bored. They don't even know they're dead, half of them, except that they can't, you know, interact with the live people. And so they just kind of go and hang out with people and their minds, their, their mental body is still with them. And so they can put thoughts into people's heads like, oh, I'd really like to have a drink. And they make people, you know, drink alcohol or they make them go play cards or they make them go have sex with somebody because they want to watch and see these interactions. And so we need to help them understand they're not progressing. So when I talk to these souls, I tell them, you know, you can be forgiven for whatever you did, whatever you're staying in this, this realm. And you can evolve and go into heaven and be reborn and keep evolving. And when they hear this, they're like, wow, I can do that? And you say, yes, now I'll bring in your loved ones. I'll bring in Jesus, whoever you need to guide you and feel good about going. And as you do that, as you call in their loved ones, guess what happens? They show up as you call in Jesus. Guess what happens? Jesus shows up or any belief system that they have. And so you can let them be comfortable because these other beings come and they help them go to the light and, the, and go to source. And that's what we need to help them do. So yes, you, you silently, telepathically talk with them. You don't have to move your lips or say anything. You just, in your mind, you, you say things. Now, I think you have said we are responsible for our own separation by creating lower vibrations through thoughts, feelings, actions, etc. What caused us to start doing that if we were once beings of light? Was it dark entities influencing us to do this in order to cause us to separate from God so we could be controlled? You know, that's the, the $56,000 question right there. And to, truthfully, uh, you know, this evolved over time. And we actually didn't create time till we got into the third dimension. So when we lowered ourselves into the third dimension through our thoughts, our actions, and our intent, we wanted to be in a more duality universe where we could choose right and wrong. Now guess who created this third dimension? The fallen angels. 
and they created it in the entire universe. But there's higher dimensions throughout the universe too, and it's all right here. There are higher dimensions right here. And so as you lower your vibration, you can't remember those higher dimensions because they're such a high vibration. You have to be attuned to them in order to recall those thoughts. That's why we forget when we are born. Now, some people don't forget. They come with a mission and they know what that mission is and they resolve to keep that higher vibra vibratory thought within their art field and they accomplish that. So some people are born with memories of the past. As a matter of fact, most of us are, except most of us don't pay attention to them because we think they're just dreams or whatever. And so we are the ones that separated us from God. And even the fallen angels are the ones who separated themselves from God and created this third dimensional universe and the fourth dimensional universe. And they're very closely interacted. When we get back up into the fifth dimension, there's no uh, time space, there's space time. And so uh, it's quite fascinating. So, if you change the memory, does that mean you aren't dealing with it? No, it means that you let it go. You change the memory to the new memory that you want to create, and you bring that forward, the new scenario, and you create it into a new memory, and you don't talk about that old one anymore. See, that's the problem psychologists, psychiatrists do, is they keep bringing up the old crap. And so it re-stimulates the energy and the thoughts, recreating it again and again and again. And we want to let go of that and bring a new, more loving, kind scenario forward. Okay, is this a form of avoidance or su su suppression? Absolutely! We are recreating a new timeline. We are no longer going to live in that scenario where we hurt somebody or they hurt us, creating trauma. We are recreating a scenario where there is no trauma, but there's love, there's contentment, there's joy, there's peace. You've got to understand, we can't create something unless we focus our energy, our thoughts, and our actions, creating a different personality, a different scenario. And as you create that different personality where you're no longer traumatized, you create a new personal reality. And that goes on and creates a new reality for the global reality. So we've got to pull out of all this trauma. We, you know, a lot of people, oh, I wish it was the way it used to be. Well, guess what? It won't be the way it used to be unless you recreate it. We've all got to focus on uncreating the pandemic, uncreating what's happened during the pandemic. And that way, we will recreate our intent, our thoughts, our actions, our emotions, recreating our personal reality, our personality, our personal reality, and our global reality. So yes, we are kind of in avoidance, but it's good to avoid bad things, isn't it? Okay, what if I don't feel anything? Okay, if you're not feeling anything, some people are numb. And we've been hurt so much that we literally have numbed ourselves through our thoughts. And so we need to ponder, pray, and create. Well, find what's causing our trauma, whether it's emotional trauma, mental trauma, 
through prayer, pondering, and meditation, and you will be given the answer. You go with the intent to find out what caused problems with you. And when you find that, you will find it, because whenever you ask God, the door is opened. You know, we knock and it's opened, uh, or we ask and it will be given. And let me tell you, I know that works. I've had it happen time and time and time and time and time again throughout my life. So if we don't ask, how are we going to get the answer? If we don't knock, how are we going to have it be open? So if we're not feeling anything, we need to pray, ponder, keep asking, meditate, pay, pray, ponder, just keep going through that. And you will have it revealed to you, and it will come. So, uh, that's the end of the questions, and it's the end of our time tonight. We're going to give everybody a blessing. So, just remember next week. Oh, what, what are we talking about next week? Oh, yeah. Transforming and healing our DNA damage, protecting and perfecting ourselves. So, God bless each and every one of you. We're going to give a blessing to all of you. In the name of the Almighty, I am that I am. And by direction of the great divine director, the creators of the universe, we ask a special blessing upon all of you who watch this video, whether you're watching tonight, tomorrow, whenever, that the Spirit of God comes into your hearts, your minds, and your soul, and that the love of God will come into your minds, your thoughts, your minds, and your souls. Come into your heart the love of God, so that you will know what the true nature of God is, which is only love. We bless you that you will use that love to conquer all your fears, your anxieties, your thoughts that have been created by you and the help of other humans. We bless that you will recreate those scenarios, recreate those thoughts, those traumas, and change the way you think about them so that your thoughts can change the way you think about your world. We bless you that God will assist you with this, that the angels, the ascended masters will assist you. They will inspire you. They will speak to you. Listen, ponder, pray, and meditate, and know that you will be given the answers. And if you're not receiving them, continue petitioning God, because as you continue, those petitions will rise up to the higher vibrations and bring you the answers. We bless each and every one of you that if you're not feeling strong enough to do this, that God will give you strength. We bless you that if you're not hearing, we bless you that God will give you the sound of his voice. We bless those who are not feeling this that you will ask God and God will help you feel and know what to do. We bless each of you that you will telepathically wake up people by loving them and asking them to wake up to the truth. And doing this will be very beneficial for all the humans in the universe because we are all one and as one goes, we all go. So we all need to be, able to be led by leaders that bring us back into the presence and love of God. We bless you with these things. We bless your health, your strength, your bodies to have your energy. Take back your energy. Don't allow any negative energy out to others. Forgive it and let it go and bring back your health, your energy, by following the love of God and only having the love of God for your neighbor. We bless you with these things in the name of Jesus Christ and all the other ascended beings of light and love. 
so be it. So it is. God bless you all, and thank you for listening. We'll see you next week.